How's it guys, Manash here, back with more Alliance War, Second War of Season 25, and today we have none other than a Bulwark War, and it's been a while since I've had one of these. I think the last time was about a year ago, uh, just before Flow became the dominant tactic. So I'm just going to swap out Doom for Warlock, because today we have a bit of a cranky little mutant to take care of. So I'm going to be starting on Part 1 in Section 1, a part that I'm very familiar with after Season 22, and then I'm going to switch to Part 3 in Section 2. So first we have Starfish Face, um, I mean Nova, with Arc Overload and Vigorous Assault. So I'm just gonna use Quake for this fight because she completely bypasses Arc Overload, which means Vigor will never trigger and she does it very conveniently, like I don't need to change my playstyle or use any pre-fights or sacrifice my children to the Quake Gods, it's just very straightforward. So I did a little bit of Quaking in this war, I think I used her on my first three fights, but before you click off of the video, just hear me out. I do understand that, you know, not everyone likes the Quake gameplay or just finds it boring, so I'm not just gonna do your standard Quake gameplay commentary. I do try to make things a bit more interesting or entertaining, and I can just use the magical powers of video editing to skip or speed up some parts. I remember asking a couple of wars ago if I should uh, speed up some parts, or just carry on rambling like what I'm doing right now, and the responses were fairly balanced, although there were a few more people on Team Ramble, so I might just do a bit of both. Also, the Quake fights really didn't take that long in this war. Nova was the longest one and then the other two took one minute each. Okay, so Nova goes down and now we're gonna move on to Darkhawk with Indomitable and Masochism. So this is a fight that I'm not gonna speed up because I did do some heavy only here. Uh, not because I needed to, but more just for fun. Uh, I just felt like doing it, so I did it. Really unnecessary for this fight. I was just getting into the Quaking mood, so I just felt like uh, flexing my Quaking prowess, I guess. And of course, by prowess, I don't mean that buff or effect that increases your special damage. I mean the actual word, which means how good you are at something, or your skill, basically. So I think I mostly did heavy decks in this fight, with just a few heavy only combos in between. But I've quaked the blue Power Ranger so many times at this stage, so getting into that heavy only groove with them is almost natural at this stage for me. For some champs, I might need to do a duel just to re-familiarize myself with some of the animations, but for Darkhawk, I can just go in and start inverted tapping with my right thumb. Because that's kind of what heavy only feels like. It's almost like you're tapping air by lifting your thumb up, and then you're resting it on the screen when you hold the heavy. So yeah, Darkhawk goes down, very comfortable fight with Quake, and now we're gonna move on to Section 2 on Part 3. So now I've applied a lesser champion boost for the next two fights in Section 2. Where first up we have a Dormammu with Chitinous Thorns, Boost Buff Armor Up and Enhanced Armor Up. So Mr. Pumpkin Head over here doesn't actually gain any armor buffs, so you could use pretty much any Dormammu counter for this fight, cause he basically has no nodes, so it's a bit of an odd placement, um, maybe it's just for diversity, otherwise I'm not sure why he's placed here. Not that I'm complaining, I'll take the easy W, I just found it a bit odd. Also they didn't place a champ on the next fight on part 3. So it's kind of like they just didn't care about this path, uh, maybe because the fights or the nodes are easy enough already. But yeah, Domamu goes down, pretty standard stuff with Quake, and now I'm going to apply a greater special 3 defense boost, because now we're going to face a Hyperion with strike counter combat power rate, buffet, and boost buff armor up. So now we are done with the Quake fights, and if you've made it this far along the video without skipping, thank you, I really do appreciate that. So now we have 4 more fights where we're going to be using Warlock and Nick Fury. So this Hyperion is a fight I've never done before. But I figured Warlock should work well just because he has the passive heal block, which takes care of Buffet. And if Hyperion has wall power, that can make the fight a little bit easier, just in terms of managing his power. So I didn't actually quite play this fight perfectly, I wasn't actually sure how to play it at first. Um, but now I have done the fight again, I did it again in War 4 and... I have a much better strategy for it now. So at first here I was trying to comply with the strike counter node, just so I don't get too many of those suppressions on me. But then I realized if I throw a special one to reset those charges, that'll consume the infections and then you'll be able to regen once again. So I said okay maybe I should just ignore this node and just do the normal 5 hit combos and throw some heavy attacks here and there. And just try to manage the fight, you know, bait specials and punish. So the one thing I didn't do enough in this fight is throw heavy attacks. And that's actually the thing I'm supposed to be doing the most in this fight. Cause Warlock's heavy applies a bleed debuff which will trigger his willpower. 
and then he'll be healing but he won't be healing so I have the infection on him which means he'll get power drained and you can have a bleed on him for pretty much the entire fight so that would make managing his power a lot easier as long as you have at least one infection on him and at least one debuff you shouldn't need to worry about him throwing a special 3 but I'm stupid, so I just keep on doing basic combos and let him get to 3 bars of power. So I am going to take a special 3 here, which is why I use the special 3 defense boost. And the special 3 will take me down to 71%. So that's a bit of a minor inconvenience I guess, but at least it's Hyperion, you know. Far from the worst champ to get smashed by if you ask me. And the special 3 does give him those cosmic charges and more masculinity, so good for him. So we've had our fun, but now you're going to see me do the fight properly which means a lot more parry heavy and a lot less getting smashed by special 3s. And now he's going down fairly quickly, you know, those heavies are putting in some work with those bleeds. And parrying is just good for applying infections since you apply 4 with each parry. Okay, not too bad and now we're gonna move on to the final section which means big boy boosts. Cause we still have 3 more fights to do with the first one being a cosmic ghost rider with stunning reflection, polka dot power and stun vulnerability. So I'm just going to use Nick Fury for this fight because there's nothing too particular about it. I've done this exact same fight twice before with Nick Fury and it's always gone pretty well. You can use pretty much any good champ with enough damage. I just like Nick Fury for it because he has that safety net of being stunned immune in the next phase. If we even get to that, and we never get to that, I'd have to mess up pretty badly for us to get to that. Like if I were to suddenly lose all feelings in my hands and I just drop my iPad and then you know I can't pick it up in time. Or maybe I have an extremely and severe rare case of amnesia and I forget how Cosmic Ghost Rider's animations look like and I just get hit by the special one. Get that incinerate damage on me or something or you know something just really far-fetched that probably wouldn't happen in this timeline. The most likely way it would happen is if the game just starts to start dishing out random freezing and lag spikes and all that and just start performing poorly. Or so I thought because what's about to happen is something I never thought about at the time. So there's another way it could happen and this is becoming a bit more of an issue these days. Basically those realistic hitboxes got me again. I went for a backdraft with a light attack and I just whiffed and he punished me. When I was doing the fight I thought, did I just mishandle that backdraft? You know, I was very puzzled by it. Then after the war I watched the recording and slowed it down and saw something a bit more interesting. So now I'm close to ending the fight, he's in assassin range, not much left. Dex a special one and going for the punish, do a backdrop light attack and then nope, he drops a full combo which activates the damnation of course. So check this out, at this point you can see him going through my fist. But right after that, literally a frame after that, it looks like he's standing upright, making it look like I whiffed and then he goes in with the medium attack to punish. So yeah, that kind of stinks, but I just had to carry on with the fight and I almost gave him 3 bars of power here because I wasn't fully aware of the power gain at the time and I just carried on hitting him until I backed off just before he got to 3 bars. So then I just have to block a special 2 which does a bit of an annoying amount of damage with all those armor breaks. Then I can punish, leaving him with 1% health to throw that special 1. DX that, punish that and finally he goes down. Now I'm going to apply two more boosts for the last two fights, Lesser Attack and Combat Region just to save some health potions. Now we're going to move on to Thing with the best defense, Brute Force, Spry and Limber. So again I'm going to use Nick Fury for this fight. Might not be the best counter but I do have the Wags pre-fight so it's actually not that difficult at all with him. It's pretty straightforward in fact because he does have those bleeds which can manage the rock armor pretty well. So I actually wasn't expecting to take this fight, um, I wasn't assigned it initially, but yeah no I actually don't even remember why I ended up taking this fight to be honest. Might just be because I was going to be boosted anyway since I had to take the fight before this and the fight after this. So I might as well just take this fight as well if it means saving boosts overall. Combat region is the one boost I'm never short on so it's just good for saving potions. You know, just pop one and heal for the first bit of the fight. But I didn't really need to use it, it's a very straightforward fight with Nick Fury. But of course we like to be extra safe and maximize our chances of winning. Sometimes things can go wrong and it might not even be your fault. But nothing went wrong in this fight, it went really well, super smooth fight, um, finished with barely any health loss. 
which means I was able to play very aggressively throughout the fight without worrying about that degen from brute force. Baiting special 1 helps with that because you can just parry and then drop a hit or two if you want to deal with brute force if he's being a bit too passive. But I wasn't really focused on which special attack to bait, I was just dexing whatever he decides to throw. Then I was just throwing special 2 since those are pretty good for managing the fight. It applies 4 bleeds with those 3 hits. Uh, the first 2 hits apply the 2 bleeds and then the last one can apply a stun. You can also use the special 1 for that because it does apply a disorient debuff so less ability accuracy. I just prefer the special 2 because it's quicker and it does more damage. But it can also do a little bit too much damage which will trigger protect. And the stun can also trigger it, which isn't a very high chance, only 50% without charges. But I stunned him twice out of two special attacks, which is usually the RNG I want, but not in this fight. So I just stopped using the special 2 and stopped using special attacks in general and just finished him with basic combos. So not bad at all with Nick Fury and the Wax pre-fight. Okay, now we have our last fight, the main event, but before that, <laughs> I applied more boosts, lol. Uh, but they just class boosts for Warlock. Because now we have a rank 3 weapon X boss, or as I like to call him, Diaper Boy. So Warlock is a pretty good counter for this fight, mainly due to the infection mechanic being able to bypass or rather shut down his region. And while that happens, you'll also slowly be getting power drained. So the main thing about weapon X is you first want to watch his rage charges. It's that little green or red icon with the number to the left of him and it goes up whenever you hit him and when he hits 25 he goes berserk. Or if he uses a special one when he has at least 15 charges he'll also go into berserk which is what happened in this fight and that's when he goes unstoppable for a few seconds and will be unblockable. It also gives him a few other benefits like a big attack increase and more region. So basically he gets really cranky when he goes berserk. Like you saw I had one failed attempt to punish his special one with my heavy attack, then he dropped a full combo on me which included 12k light attack crits. If Warlock wasn't bleed immune I most likely would have died there. Then the one time I actually do punish it with the heavy attack, it crits and triggers bulwark. And I wanted to drop another heavy attack to apply another bleed debuff, which would remove the indestructible since Warlock is also metal. But I hesitated because I remembered what happened the last time I did that to a war boss. I think it was an apocalypse where he had stand your ground so he just blocked my heavy attack. He resisted it but fortunately he didn't punish me. But I can't take that chance with this weapon next because he is very aggressive when he goes berserk. As you can see it's pretty easy to backdraft intercept him just because he's so aggressive. Can't imagine what put him in such a foul mood but he just doesn't stop coming at you. Maybe it's the attire, I imagine it can't be very fun wearing that clunky helmet and the world's most uncomfortable diaper, with all those cords and straps and spikes on his back, looking like he's going to some BDSM convention or something. Or maybe he's just really cranky because he soiled himself, because I'm seeing some activity going on back there. He probably had a few too many chimichangas and just couldn't help himself, the poor lad. So I think he just needs a good old fashioned diaper change and then he'll feel as good as new. I'm sure if he asked Jean nicely enough she would oblige eventually, um, if Scott isn't around of course. Um, okay now the fight is almost over, he is in assassin range. And I, what you're gonna see him do here is trigger berserk by getting to 25 charges. So I just wanna be aware when he has 24 charges cause I know one more hit and he'll go berserk. May I just back off? Without the unstoppable. If I drop my special 2, which has a bunch of hits on it and I have no infection on him right now, so he is going to heal a bit of an annoying amount. But once I do have the infection, it's just a matter of dropping a few more combos, just carry on with the back drafts, and he goes down. And that's how you take care of a diaper boy, although I do feel a little bit bad for him, because it's not his fault, you know, he didn't do a bad job, I just don't think he had enough love and um, support. Because if you look on the other side, my weapon X got 2 kills this war, you know, because I actually do take care of him, I treat him with love and respect, and he rewards me for it by getting kills. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed, if you do, you know which buttons to hit, but as always, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon.